Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today is going to be another two back or not to back. We're going to be diving into a bunch of crowdfunding campaigns, going over the active, the news, some updates, all of those things. But as usual, starting off with Cult of the Now. There's always a ton of games on crowdfunding. The crowdfunding is a phenomenally fun journey with a lot of fun little toys showing up a year later. But the flip side is sometimes they're showing up a year later, and sometimes they're showing up without reviews, and sometimes they're expensive. And so, as a reminder, before we dive into the campaigns, we do Cult of the Now, where we take a look at a currently available game. In this case, Caldera Park over on Game Nerds. Uh, this one just got a review over the Dice Tower. I believe it got an 8 out of 10, if I'm not mistaken. I've had a few people tell me that because I like Cascadia, I should totally be trying this game. I do like Cascadia. I will try this game at some point. But for $27.97 over on Game Nerds, this game has reviews. It's available. You can get it now. It's reasonably priced, although there is at least one game we'll be covering later today that is also reasonably priced. But this one, either way, Caldera Park is our Cult of the Now segment. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into the crowdfunding campaigns. But first, a regular reminder that I do work for GameFound. I am the CMO of GameFound. So take that into account count as we go through these campaigns. The two back or not to back series is something I've been doing for like three years before I took a job at GameFound, but nonetheless, take that into account as we go through things. And with that, starting off with our first uh, board game adjacent, we have the filler storage system for pocket board games. This is 1,100 backers, $89,000 raised, 24 days to go. The filler storage system is exactly what it sounds like. It's a storage system, a stacking of two containers that will fit nicely into your Calyx so you don't have to have wasted space. You can see it a little more if we scroll down over here. You can see it uh, in the Calyx cubby over there, taking up space so you don't have just wasted games trying to stack them. I've dealt with these kinds of boxes of games on my shelf and it's not efficient. It's never efficient. This over here is going to, the aim of this is to make it significantly more efficient, maximizing your space and your accessibility at the same time, while giving you a ton of ways to store any number of different games, and you can pull out the bottom without pulling out the top. It's a separate system, like hooks around so you can, you don't have to pull out both at the same time. And then over here they're kind of show you like a dozen of configurations of different games, showing you like, hey, we can fit all these games into one, or all these games, as well as that, you know, putting different configurations. We can have Burgle Bros in a bunch of games. We have Tranquility and I Dark Overlord. We can have a bunch of games from all play over here we could have a million little button shy games just giving you different configurations of what the storage system will actually accomplish as far as it's holding uh, the price points over here is going to be $55 for the I think it's 55 let's scroll down 55 nope no nope, no nope, here we go 55 for the launch special over here and then you can go ahead and add more and more if you want to get more of them for your game this is gonna be our uh, the filler system it's also got like some tops over there in case you want to uh, you know put components in the top there's other things you can do with it but it seems primarily designed as a way to store your games while being mindful of space. Uh, from there, we're going to go into a few board game updates. Nothing crazy over here. We have Raising Robots with three days to go. Uh, not a lot of crazy updates over here, just showing you some of the uh, the uh, stretch goals. No, stretch goals. Yeah, stretch goals. Some of the stretch goals have been unlocked. We have just more card, more arts, uh, and in particular, the art in this game is amazing, which is why I want to talk. Like, in this new inventor over here, this this crocodile guy, or this, uh, you know, alligator guy. don't know who this guy is at all, but we have a bunch of other things. We have the new robot cards. We have the snow blower or weed racker, or something dragon. In general, Raising Robots has phenomenal art, which I just want to talk about it as well. This is your last opportunity to get it uh, before, well, by next week, this campaign will be over. That's going to be Raising Robots. For Ninth Circle, I have an update and an apology. Uh, this one last week, if you watched my last week's segment on Ninth Circle, I talked about the fact that the, the game seemed to be overpriced on Kickstarter, seeing as what you were getting was basically a retail copy of the game, which was wrong. It was just straight up wrong. That's not true at all. I completely missed the fact that they had an unlock section. If you scroll down through the page, they had a section where they talked about, hey, we have these stretch goals we unlocked. We unlocked the Chaotic Realms, and we have more expansion stuff over here going on. We also have the, the various cubes that are going to be in the retail edition are upgraded to miniatures in your edition. So uh, basically, I was completely and totally wrong. The $60 price point on this game is not for a retail edition of the game. Rather, it's for an enhanced edition of the game with additional components, with the expansion, with, uh, with the extras, all those things. So uh, just an apology to the creators, to yourself. I, I, I messed this one up, and I completely missed it, and I apologize for it. I, don't get me wrong, I, I, I miss things here and there on a regular basis. The nature of covering so many campaigns means I will miss a small detail here, a small detail there. When it's a small detail and it's not a big deal, I'll still try to issue an update, but this was more than a small detail. This was me harping on the price in a way that was completely incorrect, and so again, my, my apologies to to everyone involved in this one. That's going to be Ninth Circle. Lastly, for Apex Legends, we have an update on Apex Legends where they basically released a massive change to the uh, to the system for the campaign. Basically, Apex Legends is a skirmish game from Glass Cannon Unplugged based on the popular video game IP. And I talked about it last week as well, but they basically made some updates over here. If we, we have the display and unboxing, let's look at the regular updates. If we look at all updates, they basically released a few updates of the various content over here because apparently I was not. Let's go ahead and open this over here so I can show you something. But apparently, last week when I talked about the 
game, I talked about how these dioramas for all the characters are super cool, but they're probably adding to the price, they'll take up space, they're not the kind of thing that I need, they are cool, but I don't know if I necessarily need them myself, and I commented on that, but apparently I was not the only one, because they released an update, basically completely re re redoing some of the, the aspects of the campaign, releasing three new pledges for the campaign, you can check them out over here, all without the dioramas over there, so you can get, you know, have all the gameplay content, have a 2 to 6 player base pledge and all those things, without having to get the extras that you may not want to or need to get your hands on. So basically, three new pledge levels for the game, as well as adding in additionally the storage box, the legendary storage box for 50 euro over here, as well for, well, you know, the new Kickstarter exclusive add-on for the game. And then if they hit a million Euro, they're gonna have an additional hero, which at 550,000 with 10 days left to go, it's doable, but it's definitely gonna be tight. So we'll see what happens there. But that's gonna be Apex Legends the board game, the update for this campaign from Glass Cannon Unplugged. And with that, we're going to dive into the new campaign, starting off first and foremost with El Burro. El Burro over on Game Found, a Lagrania game from Spillworks, from the same designer as Lagrania. El Burro takes uh, builds up upon those mechanics, giving you a, a, the same same core concepts with a different game that's a bit meatier, supposedly. I have not played this one, but you can check out more content on the game. This is gonna run you 79 euro for the game, and again, it's going to have a lot of those core mechanisms from Lagrange. If you're familiar with Lagrange, you're going to see a lot of the same DNA here, while also being very different at the same time. Again, you can check out the, uh, you know, more actual gameplay content, but even just the, the art and presentation overall looks good. But past that, it's El Biro, Lagrange game. It's going to be 79 euro for the game over here. It's just one pledge level, simple and to the point. We have other language editions, but just one pledge level, 79 euro for Lagrange, a for El Biro, a Lagrange game. That's going to be that one over there. From there we have over here, we have Thunder Rolls, the garage expansion, 216 backers, 9 days to go, $14,000 raised, this is the expansion to Thunder Rolls, a game from Richard Lanius that is a uh, uh, dice, I think it's dice placement, I could be wrong, I think it's dice placement, but, but it's a push your luck dice racing game in which you're going to be, I don't actually know that much of what you're going to be doing, but it's a push your luck dice placement game over here, and this is the expansion, the Thunder Rolls Get in the Garage expansion, you can get just the expansion over here, you can also get the driver pledge as well, uh, this one's rated as like a 7.5 on Board Game Geek, it's getting decent reviews, I will say as far as the should you back or should you not, will it hold this value, looking at Board Game Geek, if you take a look at, if you take a look at the sold prices, not a lot of data out there, because it's only just, it's not a ton of availability for the game, but overall, I'm skeptical that this one will hold this value, just the price point wise, what you're getting versus the aftermarket demand on this one. Uh, you can see over on the campaign over here, we have 260 backers, which is not a small amount, but it's also not a large amount, so I don't think there's a ton of demand for this game overall. And Richard Lanius is a phenomenal designer, he's like, obviously he's done Arkham, Arkham Horror, Defenders of the Realm, Freedom 5, a ton of games, and so this is a more accessible game from him. Then from there we have Age of Steam over on GameFound, Age of Steam Deluxe Expansion Volume 4 and Acrylic Track Tiles. $128,000 raised, 1,100 backers, $22,000 goal, 11 days left to go. This this one is Age of Steam, bringing you more Age of Steam content. They've already had Age of Steam, which isn't like a 20-year-old game that they recently, uh, maybe three years ago, maybe two years ago, over on Kickstarter, they reprinted Age of Steam, and then from there they gave uh, an expansion, Age of Steam and the expansions, and now we have the fourth expansion, the uh, Volume 4, which introduces seven new maps, as well as uh, two new expansion maps for two players as well, and then as well as that, you have the deluxe accessory uh, acrylic tiles for the four-year game if you want to uh, upgrade to those. But we're going to have the Rust Belt, we're going to have the Southern US, the Western US, Germany, Barbados, St. Lucia, and then it's, you know, they have all these over here showing you, actually, I'm not entirely sure, that may have been the base game, that may have been the base game, ignore me, I think that's the base game, over here we have the uh, expansion volume 4, over here we have England, Ukraine, Trisland, Blizzard of 77, South Carolina, Death Valley, and the Balkans, showing you the recommended player count for each map, as well as the Age of Steam acrylic tile set, which will overlay on top of the tiles, giving you just, you know, nicer, cooler tiles for your Age of Steam game, and then we have Jamaica and Puerto Rico, as well as these two, this, this single, the solo, and two player map for your game as well, and that's on top of the fact that you can get all the volumes 1, 2, and 3, and in general, the volumes 1, 2, and 3, all those maps, each volume for the game has multiple maps. This is not where, you know, volume one has one map. Each volume has multiple maps for the game, which Age of Steam is famous for having like a hundred different maps for the game. And it looks like they're slowly packing those up together. I don't know if any of them are new or not. I haven't followed enough to know if there are new maps or not new maps, but they're giving you lots of ways to get access to, well, a ton of things for this game. We have the retail edition, we have the deluxe edition, we have, you know, the expansion maps, we have uh, components for the wooden locomotives, making sure to get the right region and all that stuff. But that's going to be Age of Steam Deluxe over on GameFound. Uh, 
Anything new is going to run you $96 over here. Then you can pick and select from there. $48, $48, uh, 33 and 79 for the all-in for North America only. Lots of ways to spend a lot of money on this game. Uh, Age of Steam is famous for being uh, part of a trilogy from, from Martin Wallace. Uh, Age of Steam, Steam, and Railways of the World. Those are three different yet very samey game systems. All have their own unique aspects. To me, my personal favorite has always been... I've played all three. My personal favorite is Steam. Rail Railways of the World I played long enough ago that I'm not sure which one I prefer. It's been too far back. Age of Steam I played fairly recently, like in the past year or so. Railways of the World was like eight years ago, so I'm not confident on which one I like more in that sense. That's going to be Age of Steam over on GameFound. From there we have Slackjack, a pirate game of bluffing and deception. This is the uh, cheaper, more affordable game I mentioned earlier. A 10 minute game of blackjack and social deduction for four to eight players. $9,200 raised, $372 backers, 11 days to go. It's coming to you from Bluebeard Entertainment. I recently played their their last game. Oh my gosh, what was the last game called? It's a pyramid game. Not a pyramid game. It was a pyramid game with like polyomino tiles. I could just click on it. I'm going to click on it. It's going to bother me. It's going to bother me if I don't do this. What was the game called? Cartouche. Cartouche. Never mind. I don't need to go to it. Cartouche. They had an Egyptian game. Cartouche. I liked it. Either way. Moving on over here, we have uh, Sla Slackjack. Slackjack is a game where you have a pirate captain. The pirate captain is going to sit there and try to figure out all the players at the table are going to draw two cards and then uh, can to discuss with the pirate captain who they are, what they have, and try to convince them of their hands, at which point the pirate captain will pick two players and you're going to face off against the other players and see who can get closer to 21 in the game while the players use their various abilities. So a little bit of, so a little bit of social deduction, a little bit of blackjack, very accessible and to dive into and for nine dollars you have the stowaway pledge which just gives you the pure cards nothing else you'll need some tokens to play through it past that and then from there we have the crewmate pledge which will give you the slackjack base game the advanced character cards thrown in uh that's gonna be 19 dollars for that the punch board coin set and all unlocked promo characters and stretch goals and then for 29 dollars you get the all-in which is going to give you all of that as well as the metal coin set as well as the deck of slackjack themed playing cards and then 50 dollars you have retailers as well but that's basically slackjack it's a, a quick fast-paced game of, of blackjack and social deduction all mixed into one experience uh, as far as will it holds value, will it not? I mean, it's a cheap game. It's a very, very cheap game. But I would say that this one comes down less to the cost and more to the general demand in this one. Uh, it's Again, it's a it's a relatively affordable game. Your basic pledge is going to run you $19 plus shipping. It's not over the top over there. Uh, will you get that back? Uh, skeptical so. In general, cheaper games are harder to get your money back just because of shipping and all those things. But it's definitely on the more affordable side. So if you're interested in it, it's not going to cost you a lot. And then we have Carson City Big Box, 125,000 euro raised, 1,300 backers, $40,000 a goal, 16 days left to go. Uh, this is a reprint from Quinnette Games, and before we even go in further, it's worth noting, you can also get your hands on Carnegie, so if you're looking for either of those games, those are both available over here. But Carson City, Carson City from Xavier Georges is a phenomenal game. I love this game, I've loved this game for a very long time, I've had this in my collection since... I want to say 2014, but I'm not 100% confident. But I want to say 2014, I've had this. I played it at a friend's house. I loved it, and I immediately tried to hunt down a copy. Uh, but this is Carson City over here. This is going to be a worker placement game across four rounds in which you're placing down your workers in order to not just get what you want, but also to duel it out. You can go on a spot where another player went, and you're going to fight over it, which means you're also trying to be mindful of getting your hands on the guns. This game has a lot of expansions, a lot of content. Some of the best metal coins I've seen, not some of the best, arguably the best metal coins I've seen in any game system I've, I, I've played. I'm very excited to see that they have them over here. Uh, this game is going to come with a new insert. My copy has a fancy wooden insert. Uh, this one's going to come in with a new, different insert that in some way I don't know much about, like, this is going to be designed from designed by Black Magic Insert, who did the uh, insert behind Carnegie. Different name, but same people did the insert behind Carnegie. They're going to be designing an insert for this box as well, and so that's always intriguing as well. We have the revised rulebook and player aids, so making everything just more condensed and accessible, as well as adding a solo mode to the game, in case you wanted a solo mode for Carson City. That's going to be designed by Xavier Georges, I believe, and added to the experience. But that's basically what we have over here. We have the GameFound exclusive insert, we have the, the metal coins, the upgraded wooden packs, all of those things. Just a lot of new stuff for this game. Well, not a lot of stuff, some new stuff, but a reprinting of this hard to find out of print game. Speaking of which, as far as price points over here, we have Carson City, the 35 euro for the upgrade box for existing owners of the game. We have 75 euro for the cardboard edition of the game. 50 euro for a retailer pledge, you can ignore that. And then 95 euro for the Carson City wood box of the game. Now they did note the, the, bo the, the box over here is going to fit both the cardboard and the, well not both, it's going to fit either the cardboard or the wood edition, but not both at the same time. So uh, you can store, you can have both if you're willing to store 
four things separately, but that's basically the game. Then we have Carnegie over here. We have 90 euro for that. And then a bunch of metal coins. These, by the way, again, if you have any use for these, these are some of the best metal coins I've seen in the game. It might be worth picking up a second set for whatever game you have that can benefit from these. They're perfect for this game, but I'm sure they'll be a good fit for something else as well. And then you have the various individual things from promos to dice. These custom combat dice are very cool. All these various things you can add to your pledge if you want to add more and more. And that is Carson City Big Box over on GameFound. From there, we have Rush Instincts of the Den. $43,000 raised, 580 backers. Rush is a Fox-themed Euro-style, Euro-strategy game played across four rounds as you use your action dice to try to build up your tableau, to build a network of things, to improve your actions. A whole lot of things going on in this Euro game. Uh, 25 minutes per player, 14 plus, for one to four players. Uh, this is going to be, well, I mean, I covered it mostly. It's going to be a dice. You're going to be rolling a dice, determining if it's night or day, uh, which is going to determine certain attributes. You're leveling up your foxes. You're building up your tableau. You're going to be using your dear action dice for your core actions in the game. A lot of things going on in this mid to heavy Euro game from uh, Ruse Games over here. They also have the Firefox mini expansion in the uh, as part of the pledges over here. They have one core pledge. They have multiple pledges you can have as far as different price points, so to speak. So if you get two copies, you save a little bit. But the core pledge is just one single pledge over here. It's going to run you $89 or $120 Canadian, which gives you the instinct pledge with all stretch goals. From there, you can go ahead and bump it up to $173 for two copies. Great if you have a friend involved. Over here, the retailer pledge, and the retailer pledge says it's for four copies, but they've said that's a mistake. It's actually for six copies. So if you are a retailer watching this video, that is not four copies. That is going to be six copies of the game instead. That's basically, you know, Roos. That's basically a uh, uh, Roos over here. Roos. I'm saying Roos. 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 Now the word has lost all meaning. But that's basically this game, this Fox themed game. That's gonna be what's going on over here. As far as, and we have a ton of things being unlocked slowly. We have the funding goal, we have the wooden resources, the wooden hunter, the obstacles, all these things and upgrades slowly being unlocked as you go. Games available to play on Tabletop Simulator if you wanna check it out there. And shipping's gonna run you $25 Canadian or $18 US, which brings us to the should you back or should you not. And overall, this is a big box with a lot of components. They, they did a good job showing, you know, hey, we have like hundreds of components. Uh, what is it, 580 components, which is a reasonable number. Even though you are adding up a lot of small pieces, it's still a decent large number over there as far as what's there. Nobody wants to count that out. But over here, I think the big question over here is the price point of the game is going to run you $90 plus $25 shipping plus $18 shipping. So it's going to be $110 uh, on the low end to get your hands on this game for a Euro game, which just prices it out of the realm of, you know, easier, more affordable games. On the other hand, if the box actually is that big, that's a lot of content being thrown into the box. It's going to be more reminiscent of games like Darwin's Journey as far as just how much of a Euro game you're getting out of the experience. So it almost feels like a deluxe, you know, a deluxe board and dice game from the get-go. So I'm not confident in this one. I'm not confident as far as will it hold this value, will it not. It's expensive, but it's coming with a lot of things. I'll say the biggest indicator to me generally is going to come down to popularity. With 580 backers, this game both has an audience, but not a huge audience, and that likely will translate to the aftermarket as well. So I would say that while there's a chance it will hold this value, overall it's definitely in the risk category, so back accordingly and make a decision accordingly. From there we have Table Golf Association Family Edition, 464 backers, $41,000 raised, Table Golf Association, this is the family edition of the game, making it cheaper and also not compatible. We're going to talk about it more, but this is not compatible with the original game. If you got the original game, this is going to have different thickness of tiles, which for this game is game breaking. For some games, it's like a slight annoyance. For this game, it simply will not work. The games are not compatible, unless you're trying to be like super clever and think you can use the different size tiles to act as a golf course, but don't, don't, it's not a good idea. Either way, this is Table Golf Association, a game that's gotten pretty decent reviews overall as being a, a dexterity-based golf themed game with rules and adjustments as far as being on the rough and that's counting for wind and flicking with the left hand, all these different things that kind of take the, the fun and enjoyment of a dexterity game and mix it into the theme of golf and brings you a fun, easy, accessible to play uh, dexterity-based golf system. Overall, they've gotten enough positive feedback in the game that they're coming back to Kickstarter to make this game more affordable and easier for you to get your hands on with, I believe, fewer tiles and less thickness to the tiles, but also lowering the price point accordingly. So you can get a cheaper version of the game uh, to give it more, more widespread accessibility to those who want in it. Although you can also get your hands on the Pro Edition 25 bonus tiles over here. So you can buy the, the you can buy more tiles for your for your game, as well as buying, you know, a whole bunch more for $70 if you want to get both. But again, be mindful of those different editions between the Pro Edition and the Family Edition as you go through it. Uh, overall, I recommend checking out the video over here. There's a video on fire. Check out this video over here just for like five minutes if you want to get a quick idea of how the game plays, how it operates. Uh, five minutes into this video will give you everything you need to know on how how Table Golf Family Edition, Table Golf Association, 
Family Edition actually plays out and whether or not it's a game for you. As far as should you back or should you not, it's hard to say for sure because this is different than the other than the original. But I will say the original only has a handful of sales on the uh, board game marketplace, and those sales are for significantly less than what people paid for them. So the original certainly has not held its value based on the limited data set we have so far. As far as this one, hard to say for sure. I believe I saw it in retail, if I'm not mistaken. So that's going to be. That's going to be a factor there as well, but I'm skeptical it'll hold this value even with the reduced price point. Retail may be, retail or secondhand market might be the best way for you to get your hands on it. Then there we have Asteroid Dice, the giant throw and collide squishy dice game. $46,000, $46,000 raised, 7 Jabakras, 7 days to go. This is basically throw, throw, burrito meets, I'm not entirely sure what it is. Throw, throw, burrito meets tumbling dice, maybe? A little bit, maybe. Basically, in this game, you're going to have these giant squishy foam dice. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be playing cards down the table. And if you have your unique color, if you're the only one to play the blue card, you can take the blue die just fine. But if you are fighting with other players over who gets the blue dice, you're both going to take it in an epic face off and whip at each other before finally using it to actually play the game on the table, uh, trying to collide the dice and roll off to score the highest number on the dice over there. Very simple, quick, clean, quick, clean, fun with a degree of uh, strategy, of a degree of strategy, a degree of mind think, a degree of running around the table and just throwing things at each other. If if you ever played Throw Throw Burrito, I imagine this would have the same level of fun, plus whatever game is underneath that as well. Sometimes you have a game system where it's just about the craziness and the zaniness. This might be that, or it might actually be about the game as well. I, I can't say for sure until I've played it. I will say check out coverage by Side Game LLC. Now, I always... Side Game LLC. I did it right. Okay, I did it right. You see, Honor McKenzie, in general, I apologize. I always mix up Side Game LLC and Side Room Games. I always, like, mix them up a bit. I actually got it right this time and second-guessed myself. As far as pledge levels, there's a bunch of ways to get your hands on the game over here. We have uh, the lowest pledge level is going to be 19 euro, 19 pounds. The lowest pledge level that gets you the game is going to be 19 pounds that gets you the game. And then from there, you have different ways of upgrading to get more and more giant sets of squishy dice over here. As far as should you back or should you not, will hold its value. I'm skeptical it will. This style of game generally has an appeal to degree but it doesn't do great on the second-hand market. It's not a collector board game space kind of situation, so it's likely it's less likely to hold this value overall. From there, we have the last one of the day, which is the last spell of the board game. The last spell of the board game is going to be our last crowdfunding campaign. We have 18 days to go, 2,050 backers, $275,000 raised from Tabular Games. Tabular Games done a variety of games. What was one? They did one that I really liked, I think. I'm trying to remember what it was. They've done a bunch of games, but now I just need to find it. They did Valfarian, which I like. Barbarians is good. Barbarians is the one I like for them. They have Misty. Uh, they, they have a lot of games. I'm behind on the games. I have Misty. I really need to play that one. But I like Barbarians. I enjoyed that one. Valfarian I like. Uh, Ryo Zen was okay. I need to play the final version. And then we have the last spell over here. Sorry for that. I just want to remember it. Jog my own memory. But the last spell. The last spell, which is based on the video game, which I never heard about until today. But there is a video game called The Last Spell, and this is based on the video game. And according to Mark Street from the Dice Tower, they did a good job capturing the feel of the video game in this board game. So check that out as well if you're interested in video game or if you've never heard of the video game I do recommend watching this video I think watch the video it will compel you or if you don't want to be compelled don't watch the video I watched into this not knowing at all about how the game plays and the first minute of the video I didn't really care about but once you go into the, got into the actual gameplay I was very intrigued by this one uh, this one ultimately has you controlling heroes in a cooperative game as you try to fend off the various enemies but also trying to like use your your mana your spells your abilities trying to take down the various enemies and build up your tableau build up your base and improve your base so that you can survive the next wave of as the enemies continue to grow. It has both one shot and campaign modes to the game experience and it ultimately seems to be about trying to utilize and combine your heroes, your abilities, all those things uh, while the enemies try to overwhelm you and you try to be mindful of building up as you go. So a little bit tower defense, a little bit zombicide, a little bit I got a little bit small Mechs and Minions vibes to it. Uh, lots of fun little things going on in this one. Uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, very so very solid uh, thematic and whimsical 8-bit art combined with great miniatures. It just has a lot of things really working for this one. This one, I walked into it uh, vaguely interested in it, and, and having researched it, I kind of I kind of want it now, which is unfortunate. It is what it is, but it's unfortunate. That's going to be the last spell over here, and then you can keep going through the page. There's a lot more stuff to go over, but that's the basic idea of the game. Tableau building, tower defense, and, and defeating hordes of enemies in this game. Uh, over here, we're going to have the two pledge levels, 109 euro for the last spell pledge, which is going to give you the core game, as well as the Sinister Shadows miniature expansion, and then 159 euro for the Apocalypse pledge, which gives you all the extra things along the way. Which brings us to the should you back or should you not, will it hold its value, and all those things. Hard to say on this one. I'd say this style of game generally does a good job holding its value, but also at the same time, Tableau games in general, their games have been a little bit more mixed as far as how they've done. I'd say that similar to Ruse, this one, this is one that falls into the risk category. It could go either way on this one. This could be a game that you can easily pick up a copy down the road, uh, either of the retail edition that you want, or alternatively, you know, the secondhand market, all that, or it could be one that does hold its value. It might 
might come down to how good the game is. There's definitely a demand with it with uh, 2,000 people who are currently back in the game. There's definitely a demand for this one, but how well that translates down the road, not sure. I would definitely put this in the risk category. It could go either way. I'm inclined to believe it'll hold this value at least at first, but then as time goes on, it likely will go down over time. And that's going to be everything we have now, which means it's time for the picks of the week. Picks of the week, we usually pick two games. We pick a game that is most likely to hold this value compared to the original price. Does not mean it's a good back in terms of being cheap or affordable. It just means that uh, your best option might be getting it now. And then I also pick a game that is the, what, the my personal interest pick of the week. Now this week, Carson City is a game that I very much love, and so that and it would be my personal interest pick of the week, but we're going to split things out, and Carson City is going to be my value pick of the week. Uh, this is an easy one to see. If you take a look at the pledge levels over here, again, the core box over here for the game is going to run you, the, what is it, uh, you know, 90, 95 euro, which on the one hand seems incredibly expensive, and it is expensive. Whether or not you want this game is a different conversation than whether you should get it or whether it will hold this value. But if you look on the second-hand market, trying to hunt down a copy of Carson City Big Box right now will run you anywhere from 200 to 250 to 300 dollars for the game. It is out of print, it's hard to get your hands on, and I assume this will be between printing, I assume this will be between between print runs once again once the campaign is done. And so to that end, I think that this is the one that is my going to be my value pick of the week just based on the, the sheer demand for this game as it currently stands. Which means my interest pick of the week is going to be The Last Spell. The Last Spell is one that was not on my radar at all, past the fact that I saw ads for it, it's from Tableau Games, it lo art looked good, so it vaguely compelled me. But looking at the actual video, this is one that I want a lot more now than I did before. It looks very interesting, looks very fun, looks powers and abilities and tableau building and tower defense. Those are all words that work for me, and so The Last Spell is definitely a game that I want to get my hands on. And that's going to be my personal interest pick of the week. Which brings us to the campaigns coming up next week. We have a few, we have a bunch of campaigns coming up next week, but two I'm going to focus on right now are Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice Apocalypse. This is the expansion to Assassin's Creed. I've had a chance to play this one. You can check out my... Actually, I don't know my first impressions. My first impressions might go up tomorrow. Maybe. I think so. We can check out my first impressions going up tomorrow on the game. This is more Assassin's Creed goodness, which is a game system that I love, and I've had a chance to dive into Apocalypse. Really enjoy that one. You can check out my video of that, and this should be launching, I believe, tomorrow, but I'm not sure. And then over on GameFound, we're going to have Conquest Princess Fashion is Powered by Fight in the Box Games. This is one that I have a gameplay out already. I'm going to have a first impressions. I really enjoy this game. I highly recommend taking a look at it, especially if you're someone that likes... If you like the loop, this is a game that is very much your jam. Not not for sure, I can't guarantee it, but I think it's falling into that vein of a cooperative survival puzzle as you try to figure out how everything works together. Uh, very scenario-based. Really enjoyed this one. Highly recommend taking a look at Conquest Princess Fashion is Power from Fight in a Box Games. And with that, we're going to go ahead and end this. It's been a short week in review. Only 27 minutes. That's like nothing. That's, that's tiny. I don't know. I don't know what happened this week. I don't think I talked faster. Than, I may have talked faster than normal. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, until next time, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I, I appreciate you being here. Thanks so much. And as always, I hope you have a good one. What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? They have the same middle name.